You're about to learn how to get students to actually use the feedback you give them on their writing, which is part of the organized workflow pillar of the balanced teacher method. And it is incredibly important because most overworked English teachers spend a ton of time writing detailed feedback only to have students never look at it, or worse yet, throw it in the trash can on their way out the door, which feels pretty bad, right? Have you ever just sat there and pictured students throwing away your time in five to 10 minute increments? It's no wonder you feel so defeated and used and tired. So let's talk about three ideas for getting students to use their feedback so we can solve this problem once and for all. First of all, I don't recommend spending your time giving a lot of feedback on summative assessments. Instead, move your feedback where it will be most useful and valuable to students while they're still learning and applying the skills during the formative phase. While students are drafting, I'm always popping into their Google Docs to leave a comment, stopping by their desks for an informal conference, or leaving a private comment with a link to a mini lesson that targets a skill they need to work on. This is the kind of feedback that lets students know that you're active and present during their learning process to help them succeed and they're much more likely to act on this feedback because it's bite-sized and targeted and because they know that they're not yet finished with the product. Giving feedback on a summative is like working on a painting for hours and then showing it to somebody and having that person leave notes all over it pointing out what could be improved. Well, great, but why didn't you tell me that while I was actually working on the painting? Next. It's important to hold students accountable for applying their feedback. Make their feedback actionable and attach to resources for further revision work so that students can continue their learning. At the same time, hold them accountable for taking action. Have them make revisions in suggesting mode on their Google Doc or leave a comment reflecting on what they changed or why. Or have student-led conferences to talk through it with students on the spot. Finally, if you want students to consider feedback on a summative assessment, be sure to separate the feedback from the rubric grade. There's something about seeing that grade that shuts down the learning that could result from your feedback. Try leaving a holistic comment and marking the rubric but not revealing the grade and having students digest their feedback and reflect on it, even predicting what grade they think they've received based on your feedback. These are just three of the ways that you can change your workflow to make sure that your feedback is valued and used by students as a part of their learning process and to make sure you don't feel so defeated and useless. But that doesn't solve the problem of teacher tired. That's why you should make sure to click on the link in the description to download a free copy of my guide to streamline grading to point you down the path towards living a balanced teacher life.